Located in the heart of Edinburgh Castle, the Scottish National War Memorial is one of the most impressive structures of its type to be found anywhere in the world. Conceived around the same time as the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and with a similar purpose of commemorating the dead of the First World War, the idea behind this impressive structure was to record the names of each and every Scots man and woman killed at sea, in the air or on land. Whilst the Cenotaph in London was constructed as a focus for the grief of the Empire as a whole, it was felt that Scotland should have its own memorial, especially if Scots had paid a disproportionately high price for their eagerness to join up for what became four years of bloody slaughter. I think you have to think of it as a monument to sacrifice and duty. Uh, as you leave the memorial, above the door, there is a figure, a golden figure, clutching a broken sword, the broken blade in the left hand and the right hand holding up the cross hilt of the sword. And the figure looks out to all eternity. The broken sword signifies the ending of war, the cross hilt that right has prevailed, and against a background of the four elements of air, water, fire and earth, this figure is looking out and giving you hope as you leave after having come to grieve for your loved one, that their sacrifice was not in vain. In 1927, after four years of construction, the memorial opened. Inside a staggering 150,000 names of Scots and those with Scottish connections were listed. The Second World War added 50,000 more names, while Scots killed in more recent conflicts are also listed. Every year a memorial service is held to remember those whose names are listed so meticulously. Names dear and precious, names chosen with care, names whispered in love, grown in anguish. We are surrounded by names, men and women of all the services who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and in whose debt we all stand, all of us, without exception. At the heart of the memorial sits the shrine made of green corona marble. This is flanked by two bronze friezes, superb examples of workmanship which depict soldiers, sailors, airmen and countless other men and women from all of the services. Individual regiments have their own memorials with battle honours listed. But this memorial is about more than just the fighting man. Nurses and civilians are remembered. Even animals whose labour and death contributed greatly to ultimate victory. To relatives uh, and those in the forces, it means a huge amount. And I've lost count of the number of folk who've come for a, a few moments' reflection at the, at the memorial, uh, remembering the, the relatives and loved ones who were lost in, uh, in conflict, not just the, the, the Second World War, but in, in conflict since. I think it means an enormous amount to people. I'm really proud that we've got it right here at the, the heart of the nation in Edinburgh Castle. As service personnel continue to die in places like Afghanistan, the requirement for the Scottish National War Memorial is sadly all too obvious. And whether people come to pay tribute to recent casualties or those from the Great War, the man who will shortly take over as Vice Chairman of the War Graves Commission believes the work of the two institutions is closely linked. The Commission uh, is responsible for marking every single person in the Commonwealth forces from the two wars, uh, either with a, a named headstone or on one of the great memorials to the missing. And all those are more or less where people actually died around the world. And that's wonderful and it's very important as a nation that we should do that and continue to remember the tremendous sacrifices that people made in that way. But there always has to be a more local interest in these uh, people who have sacrificed themselves for us. Uh, and, and whether it's this wonderful National Scottish Memorial here in Edinburgh Castle, or whether it's the so many very small village memorials that you can find all the way around Scotland and the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, these are tremendously important for people locally to have a focus that they don't have to go to France or Belgium or Singapore or Burma to see these names. They can see them here 
where they can easily access them and still have the same feelings of pride and, and gratitude. The word victory appears just once within the Scottish National War Memorial. It stands not as a triumphant arch or monument to the defeat of an enemy. Rather, it serves as a sobering reminder of what happens when nations go to war.